What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. For today's video, we're gonna go over a question I often see and that's what sort of range can I get with mesh tastic? The answer to this isn't so simple and depends a lot on your location, but I'm gonna go over three tools that you can use to check this, so join me as we dig into it. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. Before we get into it, I just want to give a quick shout out to the channel's recent supporters. Your support is very much appreciated, and if you're finding these videos useful and would like to support the channel as well, you can do so by using the coffee link in the video description or by using the thanks button below the video. Thank you for your support and helping with the channel's continued production. Now, Mishtastic operates on a frequency that's going to be line of sight only, so what that means is your range will depend on if you have any obstacles in between you and the other nodes you want to communicate with. Luckily, there are a number of tools available that you can use to check this, and some are very simple and others are a little more complex and comprehensive, but they're all easy to use once you get to know how to use them, and I'll show you how. We'll start off with the easiest one to use, which is this one from the SCADA Core website here. This one's fairly basic, however, and will just show you if you have line of sight between two points on the map. To do that, you just start off by holding the left mouse button on one of the pins here, and dragging it to the first location. And while you're holding down the left mouse button, you can use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out as needed. So let's say you want to check to see if you have line of sight between your house and your friend's house. And let's say your house is here, so we'll drop the first pin at this location. Then let's say your friend's house is over here, and we'll drop the second pin at this location. As soon as we drop the pin, it'll process and generate an elevation map eventually. While we're waiting for that to generate, I want to mention to make sure you're putting these in locations you have permission to be at. I know I've mentioned that we've been putting these on ham radio towers in the area in a few videos now, but let me be very clear that these are being placed with their permission. I'll go more in depth into a recent issue where someone placed an unauthorized node that caused interference in an upcoming video, but I wanted to quickly mention that here while we're on the topic of node placement planning. So once the elevation map is generated, the next thing we'll need to do is enter in the antenna height for each location. So let's say you and your friend both have nodes on your roof 10 meters high, which is about 33 feet. So we'll go ahead and select that here, and here we can see that the line is green, and we should be able to communicate between these two locations with no problem. To see an example of two locations that wouldn't be able to communicate, let's say you have uh, another friend that lives over in this direction that you want to check the line of sight for. So if we drop the second pin here, it looks like the terrain is going to block the communications from these two locations here. So as you can see, how far you can communicate really depends a lot on your terrain and if there's any obstacles between you and who you're trying to communicate with. So that was the SCADA Core line of sight tool. The next tool we're gonna look at is from heywhatsthat.com. Now this tool adds a little more complexity, but this one's cool because it not only gives you the line of sight elevation graph, it also gives you a coverage map of the whole area to see where your signal can reach based on the terrain data. When you first go to the site, it'll start you off in Camden, Maine, and you'll just have to select where you want to check coverage by selecting the location on the map. I find that it's easier to navigate the map if you make it full screen by clicking on the button on the top right of the map here. Then you can use your mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out until you get to your desired location. So let's zoom in to the location we're interested in. Now I forgot to mention that we have options for either map or satellite or checking the terrain checkbox under map to see the terrain features. So let's say we have a friend that lives here and we want to see what sort of coverage we can get from their location. All we need to do is click on the location to place a marker there. And after we've done that, we can get out of the full screen view by clicking the toggle on the top right of the map here. Then after that, we just scroll back up to the top of the page here and 
click on the tab for New Panorama. From this page, we just need to enter in the elevation of the antenna. So let's say we're putting the node on top of our friend's house. So we'll say it's at about 35 feet above ground here. Then all we need to do is give it a title. So we'll just call it Friend's House for the demo. And then once we have the title in, we can hit the Submit Request button. Now we just have to wait for the website to process the data and make it available to us. It says two minutes, but it's typically much quicker than that from what I've experienced. So now once that's done, we can get a general idea of the coverage from that location with the areas shaded in red. We can also get a similar elevation graph like we did with the previous website by clicking on a different area of the map. So let's say we lived here and we would just click on that location and if we get out of the full screen view, you'll see where we now have that similar graph showing the terrain features between the two locations. Another cool thing you can do is click on different spots on the graph and it'll show you that location on the map as well. Now we can move on to the final one we're going to cover and that is a tool called Radio Mobile. This one is a bit more thorough and accurate which adds some complexity but it's not hard to use once you learn how to so let's get into that one. So this tool is my favorite and it even gives you the ability to combine the coverage maps to get a complete coverage across multiple locations. We'll start by going to this web page here and I'll include a link to this in the video description as well. And this tool does require you to create an account. So to do that, you would click on the create a new account link here and go through the account creation process, which is quick and simple. And then go ahead and join me here for the rest of this video after you've done that. Now that we have our login info, we can log in here with the username and the password that was emailed. Then go ahead and hit submit to log in. Logging in will bring you to the My Settings page, and we don't need to do anything here. We can just click on the Return to Main Menu button. From here, the first thing we'll want to do is add a new site. So let's do that by hitting the New Site button. Then from the map, we'll just move our marker to the general location and zoom in as we move the marker to the location we want to get coverage for. This tool also provides a number of different map options as well and also if you know the lat and long of the location you can enter that instead. So once the marker is at the desired location we can go and hit submit and on this next page here we can give it a name and since this was our example friends house in the previous tools demo we'll just name this one FH1 for friends house 1. Then we'll go ahead and click on add to my sites to save this. Now if we click on the My Sites button here, we'll see this new site listed and we can go and click on Return to Main Menu and go on and create a coverage map for the site that we just created. To do this, we just click on the New Coverage button. Now this is where things get a bit granular, so for the center site, FH1 should be selected since that's the only one we currently have, but make sure you select the correct one from here as you add sites later on. Next, we want to give the antenna height above ground. We'll go with 10 meters, which is about 33 feet. Next, we can give the antenna type, which in most cases for Meshtastic is going to be Omni, which stands for Omnidirectional. If you want to learn more about antennas, I've done a video on them, which I'll include a link to in the video description below. Now, antenna azimuth and tilt aren't important for Omnidirectional antennas, so we can just leave these as it is. For antenna gain, let's say we're using the Alpha 915 that I use on most of my builds, which is a 5 dBi antenna, so we'll go and change this number to five. Now for these mobile antenna options, I generally leave this as is. This is basically the receiving side system and is set up with a typical mobile antenna height and gain. For the description box, I usually leave this blank since the system will fill this out for you. But if you want something specific here, you can enter in that in here. Now we can go on to enter in the frequency, which is important at what makes this tool more accurate than the others. The default Meshtastic lower frequency here in the US is 906.875, but we can just round this up and put 907 here. Sticking with my usual builds that use rack wireless equipment, which are 0.2 watts, so we'll enter that in here. My builds also have very little line loss, so we'll put 0.5 here. And the rest of these options can stay as default, so we can now go ahead and hit the Submit button to generate our coverage map. 
When it's done, we'll be presented with the coverage map. The areas in green are good coverage and yellow is in the fringes. Once we have our coverage map, we need to save it by clicking the add to my coverage button on the bottom right here. So now if we click on the my coverages button, we should see it listed on the page here and we can go ahead and click the return to main menu button now. Now to show my favorite feature of this tool and show how to combine the multiple coverage maps into one complete coverage map, I'm going to go ahead and create two additional sites and coverages. And since we've already learned how to do this, I've sped this part of the video up. After we have our multiple sites and coverages created, we can now click on the multiple coverages button here and go to that page. Next, we can either click and drag to highlight all of them or press and hold the control key while clicking to pick and choose which ones we want. And once we have that, we can click on the submit button here and that'll take us to the map with the complete coverage between all of the locations. If we want to change what coverages we see, we can check or uncheck the sites listed below the map here. So with that, that covers the three tools I wanted to go over and I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And join us for our future videos where we'll go over the great node deployments we've been doing here in East Tennessee and some real world testing of Meshtastic and compare it to other licensed free communications options. Thank you all and have a good one.